are here at Apsley Farms, which is a farm near Andover in the county of Hampshire in the United Kingdom. The kind of soils that we have here on this farm are chalk based, so uh, we only have about this amount of soil on top of the chalk. For the purpose of the biogas plant, um, we decided to grow um, whole crop rye, uh, which is um, what I'm standing at at the moment. This is the stubble that is left after the crop has been taken away. Maize, which we grow uh, down in the valley by the river, because maize generally doesn't grow very well on chalk. And uh, we have discovered that what does grow extremely well on our soils is sugar beet. We are here by the feeding systems of the plant. The way the feeding of the plant works is similar to your body. The material is picked up by a loading shovel and dropped off into, say, this walking floor. Think of this walking floor as your mouth and the loading shovel as the fork that has put it there. In the pump, the material is mixed with some liquid which is recirculating from the uh, biodigesters. It is then sent down this pipework to the hydrolyzer. The digester is this part of my stomach, if you like, and we feed the digester every hour with a set quantity. So we have three digesters on this site and one post-digester. The digesters create gas and that gas is collected up at the top in that hood. Now the gas is extracted from the, uh, from the hood by a fan that is blowing gas into our internal pipeline. And from our internal pipeline, we then feed our CHPs, of which we have two here, creating 1.1 megawatt of electricity. And uh, we have our gas to grid cleanup plant, which is capable of doing 1,200 cubes of biomethane into the grid every hour. Behind me is the lagoon, and in the lagoon is the liquid which is uh, the, the final part of the process. From here, it will go to a field to be spread. Right now, we've brought um, the digestate liquid from our plant up to uh, one of the local farmer's fields. And uh, we brought about 29 cubes, which uh, nicely fits into uh, the tanker spreader. And uh, he then spreads at 36 meters, um, covering up and down the fields with uh, the digestate liquid, uh, which um, supplies the right amount of nitrogen that the crops uh, require. Behind me, we have the solids separated from the liquids. This will then be stockpiled on the side of a field and spread. It's a very valuable fertilizer. Having built the DMT kit and got it accredited before the deadline, we needed a source of gas fast. We needed something that would be simple to build, would be quick and cost effective. It went from concept through design to completion and use in just over six months. Having already built the WeFrink bag, we decided to build a circular lagoon digester. The digester we now know as LG3 has almost 10,000 cubic meters of capacity. The digester currently produces over 1,200 cubes of gas an hour, which is half the supply for the entire site.
The gas coming from the digester will be collected in the upgrading plant. The upgrading plant is divided in three different parts. The first one is the pretreatment, where the water and the hydrogen sulfide will be eliminated. Once the gas is clean, it will go to the second part. The second part is where the gas is compressed up to 16.5 bar and it will go through a membrane stages where the different streams of methane and carbon dioxide will be separated. The third part is the propane injection where some propane it will be injected inside the methane to achieve the calorific value required for the national gas grid. The carbon dioxide will go inside the CO2 captured plant and the methane will go inside the national gas grid. Here in the CO2 plant we collect the gas coming from the DMT and it's compressed at 18 bar. It goes through the active carbon filters and we get the moisture out and also all the H2O remain. After this process we get the gas and we liquefy it into the condensers. The liquid CO2 is pumped into the CO2 tanks. This CO2 will be collected from another company as a final product. Here we are in the laboratory, surrounded by lots of equipment. Uh, for instance, this one, which will test dry matter of the crops. Behind me over here is um, some pretty expensive equipment that we've purchased um, that my staff use to uh, identify uh, what is going on inside the uh, biodigesters. So we do this every single day um, and this allows us to adjust the amount of food that uh, the, the tanks can use at an optimal level. This is the control room. In here, uh, the staff control the entire plant. You can see up on the screen um, various elements. We've got uh, control systems um, for the plant, we've got CCTV, we have got the CO2 control system. We have got the system that controls the gas to grid element, otherwise known as the DMT, they manufactured that plant. And this control room is operated 24 seven. Um, also, this entire system has been developed to work on the cell phone. Uh, some people ask uh, why we built the biogas plant in the first place. Um, well, in the current market, um, a 400 hectare arable farm, which is what this is, uh, would only support maybe one or two employees and be break even at best. Um, we decided it, that uh, for three generations that we have to support on this farm, that we have to diversify. Uh, and so we chose to do a biogas plant. Um, the biogas plant these days uh, supports 17 employees. We take all our own crops as well as crops from 43 other farms and it provides enough uh, biomethane uh, to support 8,000 homes continuously.